Hey guys, what's going on? So, we have the patch note, the collab is happening tomorrow, uh, so we're going to be going over the patch note. There's actually a ton of things uh, here, and there's like so many more announcements. I haven't read them yet because it literally just came out like a few minutes ago. So we're going to go through it together. We have Soul Bad Guy here. You can see his S3 animation going off while I'm talking. It's pretty dang cool looking. We also have Baikin, the one-armed, one-eyed samurai dreaming of revenge. But uh, there is Soul. We're going to check out his skills. We're going to do a little... We're gonna do a little hero overview for all of them, first impressions. This is by no means a review though, because opinions do tend to change once they're in the game and, you know, we can see more about them and whatever. As far as I've heard, this is gonna be the free one. He will not be available in summon. You just have to play the side story to get him, which is very exciting. His summary is that he's a fire elemental warrior. He dispels buffs. He counterattacks when enemies use a non-attack skill. That's pretty interesting. It also says he can make sure enemies cannot be buffed for a short period of time after use his S3. So Gunflame will deal extra damage if the enemy isn't buffed. He'll also gain Fighting Spirit. So a fire warrior that gains Fighting Spirit sounds a lot like Ravi, but I guess his role is going to be quite a bit different. His passive will counterattack and silence for two turns when an enemy uses a non-attack Oh, wow. Or when the caster is attacked by an elite or boss monster, more damage for more health can only activate once every two turns. And then a second part to his passive Roman Cancel. If he has full fighting spirit, he'll get an extra turn while extending the duration of a buff. So that sounds like a pretty nice passive. And finally, his ultimate dispels all of an enemy's buffs with a strong punch, which also deals damage, and that's proportional to the enemy's max health. After Awakening, he'll also add the Unable to be Buffed debuff. Damn. For a free character, he sounds very good. Uh, I would be interested to know about his base stats, however, at 6-star Awakened whatever, because base stats can definitely move a character from one niche to another. For all these, though, we gotta kinda wait. So we also have Bike in here. This is most likely gonna be one of the gacha units. She looks really cool. Like a samurai chick. Kinda looks like she lost her family and friends. Now she's bent on revenge. Definitely a tough and decisive type. But anyway, let's move on uh, to her summary. She is a thief. Bleed effects. Ooh, she is a combat readiness increaser. You have my attention. I love those. All right, her summary isn't super descriptive, so we're gonna just read her skills. Oh dang, she can reduce her cooldowns with a critical here, as well as a 70% chance for two bleeds. All right, that's pretty cool looking. Uh, let's look at the active. I mean, her S3 does have a seven turn cooldown, so her first skill reducing the cooldown is probably pretty important. Looking at the after awakening second skill. Wow, so a critical hit on her second turn gives her an extra turn. That's really nice. As well as more bleeds, up to 80% chance for three bleeds. And then her ult at first glance is a little bit disappointing because it kind of encourages you not to do it straight off the bat, which is kind of what I like to do. But yeah, so it explodes all the bleeds, and it, the more bleeds they have, the more damage it'll do. Also, granted you critical, up to 25% combat readiness increase for all allies, which again is very good, but it's not going to do much damage apparently when they, when they aren't full of bleeds. But like, I can imagine for PvE, strong bosses, who knows how strong that is right now, you know? Like if you get 5, 6, 8 bleeds on the enemy, you could just take like a bleed team and have that explode and one-shot some Hunt 11s, perhaps? We're gonna have to wait and see for that, but uh, it definitely, that definitely could be a possibility. So we just get a bunch of units that can bleed, use her two skills, and then eventually, I mean, it won't be super fast and not technically a one-shot or anything, but uh, could be very powerful. We also got the new Moonlight Heroes. I talked about those a little bit at the end of one of my more recent videos, because I was able to check the next the next session of uh, Moonlight or Mystic Summons. I might do another little mini talk about them later when we're in the game and maybe gonna use our Mystic Medals, but for now, I'm just gonna kinda skip over them. They do sound interesting, a little complicated, but uh, yeah. So first impressions on these two, I think Soul is actually more interesting than Baikin, even though it's weird because he is the free one and she is not, but Again, I could be completely wrong. Maybe her damage potential is just so nuts, and I can't really see that right now, but that's my thoughts, my first impressions. Again, 
Uh, gonna skip those. They are interesting as well. But yeah, we have a lot to get through. We also have artifacts, junkyard dog, and torn sleeve. Let's check those out. Up to 50% chance to burn enemy for two turns after using basic skill. Hmm. Oh snap, and down here we have a 100% chance to inflict bleed for two turns after a single attack. So, geez, she can really start stacking up those bleeds. I don't know how much like more percent damage each bleed is gonna do. I hope it's a lot, so you can really see some uh, massive numbers. So of course we got the drop rate up, limited summon, which means yes, max 120 summons. Cool. I'm probably gonna get them both. I already regret not going for a couple of the other limited heroes, so even though right now Baikin doesn't sound super interesting to me, I'm absolutely going to grab her, as well as any others, because they are after all, limited. So hopefully I have enough crystals slash sky stones for 240 summons because that's what I assume I have to do. And we'll also be getting the special side story visitors from another world. They were talking about this in a dev note a couple weeks ago. It seemed to be very big, very special. So I'm really looking forward to, to jumping into that. We can read a bit about what's going on with it, but I kind of want to save most of my first impressions for when we're actually in the game so we can try it out there. But um, yeah, so we have like four different chapters here. Oh, it'll be split up into four separate weeks. Soul Story, Bikens, Dizzy's, and Final Story. Dizzy, yeah, what about Dizzy? Is she also going to be Gacha? Most likely, but maybe she won't. Maybe she'll come later after Biken. Like the other side stories, we can choose uh, from easy to hell, get more stuff for more stamina, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we get some buffs depending on which heroes. All Guilty Gear collaboration heroes get a buff. Cool, cool. Oh, and it's also gonna be one of those where we can get extra stuff when using a special artifact, in this case, Junkyard Dog and Torn Sleeve. Junkyard Dog might be free as well. Torn Sleeve's probably also gonna be in Gacha though. Uh, and then we have the three different types of currencies. So we've had a side story like this uh, from first impressions wise already, but that was also really nice. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. And of course, tons of rewards you can get. We also have a special tournament. Obtain event currency. Okay, use it to participate in the tournament. If you are victorious, you will obtain victory rewards and also participation in the finals. Beat other hares. Oh God, so it's like a PVP. Another PVP. I hate PVP. And we have other improvements and bug fixes. Ooh, a new battle effect detonate has been added. That's really cool. I didn't realize it would actually have a special property like that. So that's that's actually exciting. Um, it says damage is proportional to the number of turns the debuff has remaining and the number of total debuffs. Wait, is it just debuffs or? Oh, okay. She's only gonna donate bleeds, but apparently detonate in the future might be used to detonate other debuffs, okay? The boss in the new hunt as a manic whatever has had his skill description changed to make more sense. Some bug for floor 87 in Abyss. I don't really understand it, who the target is. This is a bit of a weird thing. It says improvements have been made so that the text cannot take revenge on this opponent displays for users on your revenge list who have left the game. I don't know what that really means. Like if they deleted, can can you even delete your account? I know you can like maybe reset it or something and the stuff will be deleted, but like else that just means like they go AFK and never come back. But like how long does that take before they are officially left the game? A few side story issues here. None of them seem super important because it's mostly just improvements anyway or fixes. Also have some summon improvements, which is cool. It says, improvements have been made so that players no longer have to touch the tap button when they summon. Okay, a little bit of a convenience thing there. If you want to read it all yourself, feel free to pause. It's just that this is such a long patch note and we have other things to go through, so I don't really want to go in depth on all of these. And yeah, the rest of these aren't super massive either, They're just things you'll notice maybe while you're playing, so yeah. So that's the main patch note. No information on Dizzy yet, it seems. I'm sure she will be here eventually. We also have a share event. Uh, make sure to share it. 30 Covenant bookmarks for 5,000 shares. Let's get those shares going. This might be more information on the side story, but I don't think so. It looks like this was just taken out of the patch note and put in separately to make it more streamlined, maybe. We have a limited time Mulagora pack. Nine Mulagoras, I think yeah, we already had that before. Nothing super, super exciting. Collaboration special check-in event. So this will be just like one of those web events. See what we got going on here. 30 bookmarks, Mulgora Seed, Leaf, uh, the four-star Phantasma dude. Yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. Limited time collaboration special pack. Okay, they're probably gonna be expensive. 1500 Sky Stones, I reckon at least 50. 50 for this one, 50 Leafs. 
dang, maybe more than that. Yeah, probably probably 20 and 50 or 30 and like 100. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't look at the packs too much. I'm free to play, by the way. Nah, not really, but like mostly. I just buy the monthly pack thing for $5 a month. It's worth it. Oh yeah, here we go. Biken and Torn Sleeve Limited drop rate up. So I think we actually already read that in the patch note. Whatever. She's going to be the, the thing. And okay, there actually wasn't as much as I thought. Most of this stuff was already in the patch note. Got the Molagor challenge back. It's always nice. One extra Molagor is always cool. But um, that's it for now. Look forward to a very high effort summoning video tomorrow or maybe tonight. I haven't decided yet. So yeah, collaboration coming soon. What are your thoughts on the new heroes? I mean, there could very well be things I overlooked about Biken. Just first impressions wise, I don't know. She doesn't seem anything like super special besides of course this explosions of bleed. Uh, that looks interesting, although we don't know currently how how much that's gonna be. Also her artifact, 100% chance, two turn bleed after a single attack. I don't even know if they can resist that when it's like an artifact thing. Weird. I don't know if we've we've had stuff like that before. Then again, for a 100% chance, you need to get like a bunch of Torn's leaves, and uh, good luck with that. But yeah, make sure to tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. Leaving a like if you did happen to enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks. As always for watching, and until next time.